Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 13 of Prime Comments! And as always, a reminder, we have shortened Prime Comments down because our video production has ramped way up as we head into the holiday season and into 2018. So I have chosen five specific comments, or in this case four, with a caveat on a fifth uh, to talk about. So let's just hop right into it. Uh, this comment here comes from the Nintendo acknowledges that not being able to back up saves on Switch is a problem video. Uh, and Ron Perez had this to say about it. I am sure Nintendo will address the save game backup. Since I cannot do anything about their timeline, I am not going to get worked up over this issue. I'm going to just enjoy my games until this feature is presented. If something happens to my save game data and I lose it, I will deal with it if I end up having to cross that bridge. I am human, and I can adjust to that kind of drastic change. After seeing the impact of people's lives in the Santa Rosa fires, and seeing their lives forever changed, in which they must adjust everything, my fear about losing my save game data is put to a much better perspective. And to that, I say... <laughs> I get that we're talking about what's really a first world privileged problem, but video games as an entertainment medium is a first world privileged thing. Uh, when you're comparing the lack of backup saves to like real life tragedies, that's, that's beyond the scope of what gaming is about. Because we're talking about a, a backup save file system that has been in use in the industry for well over three, four, five years, if not longer than that. Uh, Nintendo themselves actually allows you to back up your saves on your 3DS to the SD cards, the micro SD cards you can use on that. So Nintendo actually already has a backup save system on one of their current gen systems. So it, it's really weird. And on Wii, they let you back it up to SD cards. So it doesn't even need to be cloud saving, right? I, I talked about in that video how cloud savings become standard because it's available everywhere. And it, it makes it so your saves aren't tied to a physical medium that can be destroyed. Imagine that someone in a flood like that had their Switch and their SD card and everything destroyed. That backup's not going to do them any good. Um, so that's why cloud storage exists, because regardless of what happens, they can buy a Switch when they can afford it again, and then they would have their saves downloaded off the cloud. In fact, all the people's lives infected with the Santa Rosa fires would probably appreciate something like this on a system when they're looking to replace their stuff years down the road once they've recovered, uh, obviously a lot more other important things like a place to live, you know, jobs, cars, uh, making sure all family members are alive, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but yeah, it's just a weird thing to compare to. I, I understand some events happen that put put life in perspective for people. Uh, as an example, my, my grandfather just went in for an angiogram on his heart. He's had a stroke before. He was told to stop smoking. He can't stop smoking or he, he won't physically force himself to stop smoking because he's been doing it for so long. And now there, he's having a hard time pumping blood down one of his vessels from his heart. So who knows how much longer he's going to have with me. I've had my other grandfather with cancer and I realize I'm very fortunate both my grandparents and both my uh, yeah both sets of grandparents are alive um so i haven't gone through tragic losses in my life but that happens and i know people who have gone through things like back even during 9-11 way back when i know people that went to my school that lost family members in that um i've watched my best friend lose a bunch of family members over the years in fact i almost lost my best friend back in high school through a tragic bus crash that uh, we try not to bring up too much around him because it's a tragic event um, I, I didn't go through it, but I tried my best to be there for him during that as much as I could. And when we're talking about uh, video games in comparison to that, uh, there's no comparison. You, you, you shouldn't even put it in context to that. Now, you could talk about how video games help people cope. Video games gave people an escape, just like sports can give people an escape. And that's fine. But in context of comparing a game save system to a, you know a big tragedy like that, uh, that there is no comparison to be made. It, it, they shouldn't even be talked about in the same thing. So uh, just put some perspective on that. Um, th the, the tragedy happening sucks, but it's not an excuse for Nintendo not to do something about it. Um, it's just an excuse for you to not care as much about it as, as other people do. Like when I'm passionate about this stuff, it's not that I place video games and place these issues above everything else in life. Uh, it's just a passion. It's a hobby. It, it, it's entertainment. It's what I do for a living. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
I, I care about this stuff, but I don't care about it more than people's lives. Uh, and you shouldn't either. No one should. If, if that's the problem, then you probably have um, a really, really bad addiction or something. I don't know. I know there's like studies out there, is gaming addictive? Or is it just that people are addictive and gaming is just one of every single medium in the world people can get addicted to? Anyways, moving on. Uh, the next video, the next comment comes from I hate fanboyism. It's toxic and promotes a lack of changing for the better. This is actually a live stream I did. One of the few live streams I've let go public afterwards. And it's the only live stream I've let go public afterwards. I crossed over a thousand views. So I definitely feel like I touched on some things here. And this comment I chose uh, because, one, it exemplifies a fanboy. Uh, maybe even better than the comments I was covering in that video. And two, uh, it gives me a chance to... Uh, to counteract one of the fanboys. Uh, and it's a fanboy who, who actively hates my hates me and hates my channel anyways and is around just to upset me. So maybe I'm giving in a little bit. But I'm actually not upset by this comment. Um, it just highlights some of the issues that fanboys have. Uh, Joshua Warner re responded to somebody else uh, who kind of agreed with me in the video. And he said, uh, heads up my butt because I pointed out facts. And you are too blind to see it. <laughs> You're hilarious! Here's the link! Confirming Virtual Console for next year when the online service launches. And then he quotes from that link. In terms of Virtual Console, we've said with the launch of Nintendo Online, that service, that there will be executions on legacy content as part of that. And that's something that's going to launch next year. So we'll detail that at the appropriate time. And then he goes on to say, meaning that we've said that with the launch of Nintendo Online, dot, 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 there will be executions of legacy content as part of that. Boom! Drop the mic. All right. <laughs> oh, man. I love... Sometimes fanboys entertain me. And, and this is one comment that entertained me because... It is so out of context of the conversation, so out of context of what Nintendo has been saying about legacy content with in regards to their online program this whole time, that, man, when, I mean, literally Joshua Werner here is saying, here's a link confirming Virtual Console. That's not what was said. That's not even, in, in the old quote he put in there, that's not what was said. What was said is there will be executions on legacy content. Virtual Console is... What, 3DS, Wii U, Wii... I don't remember if DS had it. Maybe DS might have had some of it. I don't remember. There was DSWare, um, but I don't think I don't think it had true Virtual Console. I could be wrong. I, don't, I just don't remember Virtual Console on there because it launched with Wii. So Virtual Console is the ability to purchase and download old games, okay? Like from Nintendo's Classic Library, from like NES, SNES, Game Boy, DS, uh, although DS has been only very lightly supported, uh, N64 has obviously been a big one. Uh, and GameCube, which GameCube has never been in Virtual Console. But again, that's just another example of being able to purchase and download those games. And people have been doing that since Wii. And in fact, people who did it on Wii were able to bring their games over to Wii U. Uh, and then if they wanted to play them on the gamepad, uh, they could spend like an extra dollar or two and get the Wii U version of those Virtual Console games. So when people talk about Virtual Console, they're talking about something like that. An ability to purchase old games. Now, this could be through a subscription service, uh, and I think that's what Xbox and, no, that's what PlayStation does, I believe, um, and Xbox allows you to do that as well or something, I don't know. The, the, they, they have systems in, basically in place to enjoy their legacy of content. So, when Nintendo here talks about executions on legacy content as part of that, he's talking about their ability that, they're, that every month that the online system is being paid for you are given like a free nes game and that nes game has additional functionality uh, including online multiplayer and leaderboards now when they talk about that stuff that's not virtual console because those are not the same games those are not nes games uh as they were originally built back in the day those are nes games with additional stuff now you might think that that's better you might think that that's superior than Virtual Console, but that's not actually Virtual Console. Nintendo detailed this already before. Now, we have yet to see these games in action to fully understand it, but giving away an NES game when you pay a subscription fee every single month or an SNES game, I think they only confirmed NES right now, uh, giving away one of those games per month uh, that's only you can only use as long as you are subscribed 
by the way, uh, and giving people no abil ability to actually purchase individual games or offer a subscription service that gives you access to a library of games uh, is not the same thing. Uh, that's not Virtual Console. Reggie is doing what Reggie does. He's dancing around the question and just referring to something they already talked about. And the way that they talked about that especially back then when they announced the online system in January, is not Virtual Console. Uh, you could argue maybe it's a better version or a worse version of Virtual Console. I'd argue it's significantly worse since we're talking about a game maybe two per month uh, and we're talking about them being edited and not necessarily being the exact same version of games that we played in the past. Uh, so yeah, Nintendo has consistently danced around Virtual Console, and it's probably because of the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, the eventual N64 Classic. It seems to be that their delivery of, of their library of older games is happening through that method rather than through Switch. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know where you get confirmed Virtual Console when that's actually not even what Reggie said. He says, in terms of Virtual Console, we said that with the launch of Nintendo Online online and that service that there will be executions on legacy content as part of the executions he can't just come out and say we're going to have virtual console next year no he's saying there's executions on legacy content that's not the same thing <laughs> it means they're doing something completely different and trying to set switch aside from those like those legacy uh classic systems and uh yeah that's that's not that's not what people mean i think there's a disconnect between in terms of this comment, what fans, you know, what Virtual Console has always been and what the delivery is going to be, and it's not the same thing and it doesn't match up. So, no, right now there's no confirmation of Virtual Console as we know it or as many people might hope it would be with the subscription service will ever be coming to Switch. There's literally no confirmation. They have danced around it and just pointed at this, hey, remember this thing we talked about back in January about editing these games and allowing online and leaderboards? That's what we're, that's how our approach to Virtual Console They've never actually said that's their approach to Virtual Console, but they keep pointing at it every time someone mentions Virtual Console because they either have no plans for Virtual Console or they just their Virtual Console plans are already here. It's the classic systems. All right. And plus, this doesn't deal with the fact that people have spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on Virtual Console over the years, and they'd like to bring those games to Switch like they could on Wii U, and that's like not uh, apparently possible or something. I don't know. Nintendo doesn't talk about that either. They, they avoid all that stuff because it brings negativity. Moving on! Uh, the next comment comes from Nintendo Switch AAA three-pack giveaway. And instead of reading a comment, um, there was a bunch of comments asking about age restrictions, uh, physical and digital copies, etc. So we're giving away three... What did I call it? The Nintendo Switch AAA three-pack giveaway. Uh, we are giving away Elevate Noir, Doom... And actually, in order of recent release it's doom la noir skyrim uh if you live in the united states you will have an option between physical or digital if you live outside of the united states it's digital only uh just to save on shipping costs or or uh, other things like that and obviously i realize that someone in australia wins or certain other countries it's going to be a really really expensive for me to purchase those games uh, i will do my best it's possible uh that if the uk codes work as native codes in the Australia, I might just buy UK codes and just give them to the people in Australia because uh, I think the UK codes and Australian codes use the same system. I could be wrong, uh, but we'll work that out when I when I pick a winner and if it happens to be from one of those countries. As for restrictions, obviously these are all M-rated games, so I cannot give these to anyone who do not meet the age restrictions on these games. So... Uh, if you are, you know, I think in the United States you have to be 17 or older. Uh, other countries it might be 16 or older. So whatever you're, you mean, you have to look at your own country's restrictions on uh, M-rated games or mature rated games or, or whatever rating system, the AO games, whatever whatever rating system your country uses. Look into that, uh, and that'll let you know if you're even old enough to be eligible to win these games. Obviously, you also have to be old enough to be able to enter in contests and giveaways in your country or be from a country that allows contests and giveaways. I know, I think like Sweden or something like that doesn't allow contests and giveaways or something like that. Uh, so again, you'll have to check with your, your local places for those kind of restrictions. But as for ours, obviously we have to give the games to people who are old enough to actually legally play them. Um, sorry, even if your mom says it's okay, we, we just can't do it. Your mom would have to buy the games for you. All right. Uh, moving on, 
Uh, the, I guess the third comment, although it's from the fourth video we're going to talk about this week, uh, of Nintendo's evolving reasons to keep the 3DS around is sure interesting. Uh, Mason Craft 7 Gaming had this to say, It doesn't make sense that the Switch would sell games better than the 3DS because the Switch just started, and there are tens of millions of more people who own a 3DS rather than a Switch. Plus, the new console is new. A lot of people I know just don't want to risk it. They want to wait until... The console is more developed, has more games, etc. If the big N kills the 3DS, then anyone who wants new Nintendo games will have to buy a Switch. That last line you said is actually important. If Nintendo kills the 3DS, then everyone who wants new Nintendo games will have to buy a Switch. You just made my argument for me. That's exactly why they should kill the 3DS. <laughs> um... For starters, when you say it doesn't make sense that the Switch would sell games better than the 3DS, it does because the Switch is selling games better than the 3DS. Uh, the sales so far this year, this quarter, uh, the, through September, Switch has outsold, not only outsold the 3DS in terms of units, uh, its software has outsold the 3DS software. Uh, there, something like 13 to 15 million uh, units of software have sold for uh, Nintendo Switch and under 10 have sold for 3DS. That means that Switch is already, right now, so far this this current fiscal quarter, their primary money maker from dedicated devices, both in terms of physical hardware sales and software sales. Now you could argue this is because of excellent games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild and blah, 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 and now Super Mario Odyssey. But here's the thing. Those games are selling, selling really, really well, uh, which is making people want to buy the systems, which is creating a market to sell these games. Uh, it's been very difficult to sell games on a 3DS, I feel, in part, because the Switch is also portable. Uh, I use Metroid Samus Returns as an example, not because Metroid games always sell a ton, but I feel like Metroid Samus Returns would have sold better on Switch. Now, I have no evidence to prove that that's the case. It's just my opinion that it would have sold better because it released at a time when Switch could have maybe had a title come out that week and done pretty well. And with Metroid Prime 4 coming, some people might have bought it on Switch as a primer. Now, obviously, there are more 3DS units out there, and Pokemon this holiday would sell better on 3DS than it would on Switch because there just won't be enough Switches out there to meet the demand for Pokemon. And I understand that. Maybe that's why Pokemon is not going to come until 2018 and beyond. You know, not just because we had to wait for development time, they want to wait for a little bit larger of an install base. Although Pokemon has released on Nintendo's handhelds before when they didn't have massive install bases, and it actually helped push the install base forward, so there is that. But they have Mario this year, and, and Zelda, and Xenoblade, and, and all these other games. They don't actually need Pokemon to hit this year to help push sales. But yeah, that that's why it actually does make sense. Um to release a lot of these games from 3DS on Switch instead of on 3DS because Switch has all the sales momentum. It is the device moving up while the 3DS is the device moving down. Uh, the software sales are moving up while the 3DS software sales are moving down. We're at the end of the 3DS's life. Uh, regardless of if Switch is the replacement or not, which I firmly believe it is. I know Nintendo has consistently said it's not, but again, Nintendo's been down this road before. Uh, even if this is not the end of, of, you know, the Switch isn't the end of the 3DS, then they're going to have another dedicated handheld coming out soon because 3DS came out in 2011. We're in 2017. It's going to be dying off soon. Um, and sales are already starting to massively favor the Switch. So it's getting to that point where games are actually going to sell better on Switch because people on Switch are looking for more games to buy. Uh, as you said, um, you have friends, you know, that are, you, you know, a lot of people who don't want to risk it. They want to wait till the console to develop that has more games. But one way to have more games is to kill the 3DS. Uh, one of the big promises with Switch, one of the primary reasons that I think people are so excited about Switch, is Nintendo has never taken their dedicated gaming, uh, their dedicated gaming production, like their, the games they make for dedicated gaming hardware, and actually put all their efforts into a single system. And I think this is why people think the Switch can avoid game droughts, because they assume, especially now that Pokemon, a full RPG Pokemon is confirmed for Switch, that Nintendo is going to start focusing all of their game development on Switch. And if that's the case, game droughts? They won't exist because Nintendo makes enough games on their own to never have game droughts, but they've always made them for two separate platforms. And if we're talking about worrying about Nintendo diversifying income, their mobile games are starting to creep up and make lots and lots of money, and I feel like that's Nintendo's plan uh, to replace any rev lost revenue from having two devices on the market. So they're going to have most of their games being made for this dedicated platform, and then they have a side team making games for the phones and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I think Nintendo's going to do 
just fine. Uh, it's it's time. It, after Pokemon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, it's time. It, it's time to move on. It's time to for Nintendo to even admit, hey, look, we realize a bunch of people use Switch as a portable only. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna put our portable and our home console games all on one system because that's why people. That's what people want. People don't call the Switch a hybrid system because it's only a home console, right? It's called a hybrid system because it's also portable. So yeah, being a hybrid system, being a Switch. Uh, pretty much indicates that the 3DS is losing market share now in sales out to a device like Switch. Moving on, the last comment we're going to talk about this week. And it says, it sounds like EA has already abandoned the Switch after FIFA 18's release again. Uh, they haven't technically officially abandoned, but they're using very similar language in responses now about FIFA 18 that they used on Wii U, which heavily hints that, yeah, they pretty much jumped ship. Um, including saying the fact that they are literally not even going to start development at any more Switch games until after the Switch has been out for a full year, which, what? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, and Nehem- I'm going to totally butcher this name, but Nehemiah Cornelius had this to say. So EA gives us a crappy, watered-down version of FIFA, and they expect us to buy it. They gave Nintendo an incomplete game, missing some key components, and they're salty about the cells. I'm sure he meant sales. Uh, so we're supposed to pay 60 bucks for a half arsed game. No thanks. It's Nintendo's fault a little as well. Why would they let this company put this incomplete game on their system? So now EA can pass the blame over to them, saying sells and blah blah. I know the system needs third party support, but they don't need to put out any old outside game on the system just to have it. And that's really interesting because we're praising games like Doom that's also an older game, or Skyrim, which is a really, really old game, or L.A. Noir, which I, I know some people don't, aren't praising it, they're actually criticizing about it, but like L.A. Noir is released on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 at the same time, so it's actually day and date. It's the first third-party game to be day and date, so that's really interesting to me. Um, well, not first third-party, the first third-party to be day and date with a full version of the game, I should say. Uh, NBA 2K18 was close. It lacked being able to play with friends. You can now play with friends on NBA 2K18. In fact, after all the patching and stuff, NBA 2K18 now goes as a suggested purchase by me if you can handle playing at 30 FPS. That's obviously the big caveat. Uh, but, yeah, FIFA doesn't even allow you to play with friends still. Still to this day, you can't play with your friends on the Switch version of FIFA. So, I mean... EA's treatment of Nintendo is basically, we don't rely on you for any of our revenue, so we're just not going to support you. And with the sales of PlayStation 4 and their sale of games on PC, they really don't. I know some people also made some other nastier comments about microtransactions. And we don't need this or we don't need that. I understand EA is not a very well-liked company. They won, like, worst company to work for award, like, two years in a row way back when, when factually they're actually one of the best companies to work for because they treat their employees very, very well. Uh, they just <laughs> have really bad consumer practices, uh, and so the consumers voted them as worst company to work for when we don't work there. So I don't even know why we were involved in the vote. It should be only employees. Uh, but yeah, EA makes decisions that upset fans. Uh, there are some decisions they made with Mass Effect 3, some decisions they made with Andromeda, decisions they made recently to close Visceral Studios and can this single-player game for Star Wars, uh, which it still might end up being a single-player game. We don't know, but it's probably not going to be. Uh, so there's, EA gets a lot of flack, and they deserve a lot of flack, but EA also controls a lot of franchises and still makes good games. So I think we have to remember, EA, if they were such a crappy company and consumers hated them so much, they just wouldn't exist. But instead, they're one of the biggest triple-A companies in the world because they make games that people care about. I'll, I'll give you one example. I know you're going to roll your eyes when I say it, but Madden. I love Madden, and I know they make a ton of money off microtransactions in Ultimate Team. And to be fair, I don't play Ultimate Team. <laughs> um, but that's okay, because I've always felt like from the beginning, Ultimate Team is just a microtransaction way uh, of playing something like Tap Sports Baseball. Uh, and I know my Ultimate Team is fun, and if you enjoy Ultimate Team, great. I think it's a really neat thing. But I enjoy playing franchise mode. I enjoy playing games against people online with current rosters. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. And for that, Madden hasn't really changed uh, in terms of what it is. It's still a high-quality experience. I feel like it could be better in some regards. Um, and sometimes it gets better, sometimes it gets worse. Uh, and there's a lot of issues I have with Madden year to year, but they're issues that have been around with Madden forever. So 
Uh, you, you, myself as a Madden player, understands that that's just kind of the way it is, and they own the market because of the exclusive license. Um, yes, I loved you know NFL 2K5 back in the day when it was like 20 bucks and coming from 2K, it's just awesome. Um, in fact, I would love Nintendo because you say you know it's also the Nintendo's fault a little as well. Why would they let this company put games on the system? Uh, one, I think EA is contractually required by FIFA to put a FIFA game on every platform. Uh, someone, I, I was reading about that the other day, and I couldn't find official confirmation on it, but I remember reading several news articles on this way back when, uh, when they got that FIFA contract, that uh, there was a requirement for that that's different than Madden. Madden's requirement, um, their, their license with the NFL is an exclusivity license if they have a game on the platform. So as an example, let's say... Uh, 2K comes out and says, hey, look, we're going to make NFL 2K19 uh, exclusively on Switch next year. They could literally use all the NFL licensing stuff to do that because Madden does not exist on the platform. Uh, in response, EA would probably immediately announce Madden's coming to Switch. But Nintendo, if they partnered with 2K, they could block um, Madden from coming to Switch to allow this 2K game to be exclusive. In fact, just like MLB The Show on PlayStation 4, I wouldn't mind if Nintendo maybe contacted 2K and talked to them about that. Hey, look, you can make an NFL game on Switch. It's actually a loophole in the contract. Uh, and since EA doesn't want to play nice with it anyways, we just won't work with EA anymore. Which, I don't know if Nintendo wants to do that. Like, if you do that, you're basically saying, forget EA, we never want Star Wars games, we never want Battlefield, we never want any of this popular stuff. So I don't know if Nintendo's got the balls to do that. Um, but I understand the frustrations behind this. Um, I'm frustrated too because this means I'm always going to need another platform because I want to play EA's games. So, all right, folks, that's going to do it for this week's Prime comments. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Ruffelgenz from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.